I'm Lisa Taylor. Hi, I'm George Merry. On this week's program, a look at the challenges facing the city of Boston. And our panel of editors surveys local and national events. But Lisa, first I'll be meeting with Barbara Anderson of Citizens for Limited Taxation and James Browdy of the Tax Equity Alliance for Massachusetts. And they'll be debating the graduated income tax. A graduated state income tax for Massachusetts? Find out next on Affairs of State. Only nine states in this country have no state income tax. Seven more, including Massachusetts, have a flat rate tax structure. All the rest, 34 states and the District of Columbia, have some form of graduated income tax. But what is a graduated income tax, and should it be adopted by Bay State taxpayers? Here to discuss these questions, and whether Proposition 2.5 has outlived its usefulness, are Barbara Anderson of Citizens for Limited Taxation and James Browdy of the Tax Equity Alliance of Massachusetts. Welcome to Affairs of State, Barbara Anderson and James Browdy. Nice to have you with us. Jim, uh, your organization, Tax Secretary Alliance for Massachusetts, is uh, favoring a return to the graduated income tax. Well, actually, it's not a return, uh, a graduated income tax. Uh, what is a grad tax and why do we need it? Well, a graduated income tax says that the rate of taxation for people in higher income brackets is higher for low, than for low and middle income families. We need it because, number one, it's good economic policy. Uh, 35 of the 42 states with an income tax has it, as, as does the, the federal government. And two, the public in the state understands that all taxes are not created equal. And in this state, most taxes are unequal. A report was done, George, a few months ago by a nationally uh, recognized organization called Citizens for Tax Justice that showed that the poor in this state pay twice as much of their income to all state and local taxes as Bay State millionaires do. Middle income families pay one and a half times as much. By moving to a graduated income tax, asking those at the top to pay a little bit more and those in the middle to pay a little bit less. Basically, we restore fairness to the system and ensure that the people who really deserve tax relief, low and moderate income families, finally get it. Barbara, why is Citizens for Limited Taxation against that, if it was as good as what Jim pretends it is? Because everything Jim just said is total baloney. That's why. Really? Yes. Um, what the graduate income tax says is that the working class person who works two jobs or overtime or who gets a pay raise gets pushed into a higher tax bracket and has to pay more. So if your average working class person tries to better himself, tries to save up some money for college or, or a home or for a vacation, he gets pushed into a higher tax bracket because of that overtime, because of that extra work, or just because of inflation. I mean, inflation is the tax collector's best friend under a graduated income tax. If there's a 5% inflation and you get a cost of living increase, then you're pushed into a higher tax bracket, you get to pay more, and it's terribly unfair and that's why this has lost the last four times it was on the ballot, because every working class city in the state voted against it. Well, George, if I may, first of all, we're sure. not talking about doing anything but putting more dollars back in the pockets of middle income families. The reality How is, be? well, a study was done by an economist from the University of Wisconsin that showed that if we changed to a graduated income tax system, the top rate on the wealthiest people was still below that of other states like California and other competitors of ours we could give tax relief to people well into the high five digits. Now, in terms of Barbara's notion that if you make more money, you might be paying at a higher rate, of course that's true. But if the, let's assume your rate goes up a point. Is someone going to say, I don't want to make that extra dollar because I'm going to have to pay one additional cent to the state? The reality is it's fairness. It's taxation based upon ability to pay. And I think what it will also do is restore some trust in government because the crisis here, that's George, is not, let me just finish, Barbara, if I may, no, is not out. just about how tax dollars are spent but about how tax dollars are raised, and frankly, in this state, they're raised quite unfairly. Yeah, let's talk about trust in government. Let's remember who the Tax Equity Alliance of Massachusetts is. This organization represents the public employee unions and the human service advocates who are always up there lobbying for higher taxes. They just wanted another $850 million tax increase in May of this year after the last $2.5 billion worth of tax increases that they supported. Now they're trying to tell us that the grad tax won't bring in any extra money. Who's going to believe them? Who's going to believe Jim Brody, who says his members don't want any extra money, they just want a graduated income tax so that they can hit the rich? People over $90,000 are only, are only um, 120,000 filers. They're going to tell me they're going to raise taxes on 120,000 people and give a tax break to the other 2.8 million? Who'd believe that? That's simply ridiculous. 
Who's going to set the rates, uh, Jim? Here's what we're trying yeah. to do. Barbara mentions that yeah. this was lost. This lost four times in the past. An incident lost is not right. It was crushed four times in the past. Most recently in 1976 by 73 to 27. There were two things we're changing this Perhaps. time. One, we're beginning this process by signature collection. So the debate will be a three-year debate, not a three-month debate before the people vote. Number two, what we will file in January of 1992 is a specific rate structure with the legislature. If the legislature rejects it, or if Bill Weld vetoes it, and I'm assuming he would veto it because he only believes in tax relief for people at the top, not people in the middle, what we'll do is we'll collect signatures to put the rate structure on the ballot. So when people walk into the voting booth in November of 1994, not only could they vote for a graduated income tax as a constitutional amendment, they will have a specific rate structure in front of them. If Barbara's right, if Barbara's right, and your taxes are going to go up, I assume everybody will vote no against Isn't it. But in wonderful? fact, what's going to happen See, is tax game. relief for people in the middle. What they're asking for is a change in the Massachusetts Constitution to allow a graduated income tax. That goes into the Constitution. That has to go in. Yeah, if, if people yeah. vote yes on their proposal, it will now be in the Constitution and we can have a graduated income tax. They didn't put the rates into the Constitution because the rates are, are going to be phony rates that they'll put together in the form of a statute. That can be changed in the middle of the night anytime Jim's members, the Public Employee Unions, the Mass Teachers Association, and the Human Service Advocates lobby to change the rates. So you'd be buying a pig and a poke, ladies and gentlemen, in order to feed the piggies at the trough. Would you be, why couldn't they Thank put you. the rates into the Constitution? Would you be happy with of that, Of course Barbara? they could, but they yeah. won't. And the reason they won't is they don't want the rates in the Constitution because they want to change those rates as soon as they get permission to have a graduated income tax. Once they have that permission, the guy making, say, $25,000 suddenly sees the rate change at 3 a.m. And then the people the next year who make $30,000 see the rate change at 3 a.m on a, the following year and they go after each group each year individually you know, George, to get more money for their members which is all they want barbara talks as if the legislature doesn't have power without a graduated income tax to raise our taxes they, well, have they the, can't have a grad tax well one they have the power now but the power they don't have without this constitutional amendment is to raise it fairly if you make twenty thousand bucks a year you get taxed at six point two five percent if you make two million bucks a year in your paycheck you get taxed at 6.25 percent. If they choose to raise rates now, they've got to do it unfairly. If and the graduate on a roll call Barbara, vote, please, George, on a if roll it turns call out, vote. if it turns out that the graduated income tax Who's becomes law, up? and in the future, and in the future, taxes are raised, what that means is people at the top will be asked to pay a greater share of that increase. That's what ability to pay and tax fairness See, is all about. Politicians love the graduated income tax because they can get a tax increase without any roll call vote at all. Just with inflation, you get pushed into a higher tax bracket, and it's an automatic tax increase, and they don't have to vote on it. That's why politicians support the graduated income well, tax. Barbara, and that's question. certainly why Jim and his members it's support the graduated tax, because Barbara, they want that money. If we in the statute took away that right for taxes to go up with inflation, if we put indexing in the statute, would you support the graduated income what, tax? How strange that they didn't put indexing in their constitutional amendment, because anything in the statute is worthless. It gets changed by the legislature as soon as the people are foolish enough to give them permission for a graduated income tax, and the people in the state have never been that so foolish. Barbara, no, Barbara, why haven't right? other states repeal yes, their grad tax? you didn't do it, Jim, and you know darn well why you didn't do it. Your members want the money. They can never get enough of our money, and this is just another plot to get more Barbara, from the working class people. Barbara, why haven't other states that have the grad tax, why haven't they gotten rid of it? It's such a terrible thing. And, oh, and once you get it, you can't get rid of it. If why? people have a vote for graduated income tax, that's in our Constitution forever. No, but you can t you can change the Constitution. Oh, you'd have to go through another petition drive and another eight years. Meanwhile, in those eight years, everyone's taxes will have gone up. People will realize they've made a mistake. Why go through it? Why not just say no again after having said no four times? Because that is definitely the sensible thing to George, do. George, what Barbara wants to talk about is what's going to happen in the middle of the night. What Barbara wants to talk about is who belongs to my organization. What she doesn't want to talk about is the notion that in the Constitution it will say that people in higher brackets pay taxation at a higher rate and people in lower brackets pay at a lower rate. That means that low and middle, let me just finish, yeah, Barbara, sorry. it Go means ahead. that people in the middle are going to pay less than people making a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year. I can't imagine anybody no. opposing such it's a basic fairness people, notion except Barbara and Bill Will. It's going to mean that people earning thirty thousand dollars a year will pay more than people earning twenty five thousand dollars a year. That probably is true. And less than people and making a hundred, Barbara. And people who get that thirty thousand dollars by working overtime, by working two jobs, by getting a pay raise relative to inflation, they're the ones who will pay more every time inflation pushes them into a higher tax bracket. Working class people would be crazy to cut back their options to advance this way. When we return, we'll talk about this and also about Proposition 2.5 and, and its future. The Citizens for Limited Taxation and James Browdy of the Tax Equity Alliance for Massachusetts. Jim, uh, the uh, Proposition 2.5 has been around for about 10 years. Has it uh, worked well in the state? And you people pretty happy with it? Well, I have to be honest. I didn't live in Massachusetts in 1980 when the voters voted. I would have voted against it. 
Having said that, the fact that property taxes, which are the unfairest of taxes to low and middle income people, are kept down as a plus. The reason it worked, in quotes, despite the it fact is that working, were, then. Well, no, let me uh, say, okay. the reason it, quote, works is because the state, through 1988, wisely and correctly uh, put a lot of money, double, more than doubled local aid revenue sharing with cities and towns to make up for the loss of property tax revenues. When the bottom dropped out in 1988, the state reneged on its commitment to local aid. And what happened is cities and towns basically were faced with two untenable options, either cut services dramatically or raise property taxes dramatically. Both aren't such wonderful options. Our position has historically been that less reliance on the property tax, more reliance on state fairer taxes is better. Until that perfect world exists, our view is that if, pro if Prop 2 and a half is to be changed, the only way it should be changed is if something called circuit breaker protection is built in, which would guarantee property tax relief to low and moderate income homeowners as well as tenants. That's been team's position since we were formed in 1987. Oh, that's baloney. The, the Members of, of the Tax Equity Alliance of Team, the Math Teachers Association, the Public Employee Unions have been fighting two and a half since 1980 when they were our chief opponents and everybody knows it. They're up there lobbying now as we speak on Beacon Hill to change Proposition two and a half and exclude a certain type of, of spending from Prop two and a half and the governor vetoed that exclusion and now we're fighting to keep that despite the fact that his members, his members of the Tax Equity Alliance, the Math Teachers Association, the Public Employee Unions have been up there trying to kill two and a half for ten years. Are there some changes in two and a half that, that, the, that the CLT would accept versus a circuit breaker or something like that? Is that well, we've, we've supported a lot of changes in Prop 2 and a half. We do not support the circuit breaker. We think that all property taxes should be limited and kept down for everybody because the property tax is a regressive tax for everyone. So we've supported legislation that allowed a growth provision. Um, the two-thirds vote is now a majority vote. But the way two and a half is now is perfect. If they want more money in a community, they have to ask the voters. The voters can say yes or the voters say no. It's that simple and no legislator should be voting to change two and a half when his own local citizens are making a decision on two and a half all the time. Well, you know, it's interesting, George, yeah. that uh, Bill Weld, when he was running for governor, said he was going to increase local aid, supported question five. Question five won overwhelmingly. Barbara Anderson supported question five. And Bill Weld has now cut hundreds of millions of dollars from local aid. You can't have it both ways. If the state is going to live up to its commitment, and it should, then fine, we can keep property taxes exactly where they are. If the state's going to continue to play games, you campaign on one theme, and then as soon as you win, you turn around and do the opposite, then the reality is we've got to bring Prop 2 and a half into the 1990s. That means, by the way, only amendments, as I say, if low- and middle-income families are protected. I want to make clear here, despite what Barbara says about member organizations, team would and has opposed any change to 2 and a half if it did not include that protection. Jim, what baloney. Your members, the members of your organization, are up there at the same hearings I'm at, lobbying against Prop 2 and a half, Barbara, wanting to change it. are you responsible for every member of CLT? You're I'm talking about team's position on the right. issue. I speak for my organization. The Mass Teachers Nobody Association, else does. which is the major uh, proponent, component of their organization, is always up there lobbying to change Prop 2 and a half. The thing is, locally, and it's a problem. And support the circuit breaker, we which you don't, interestingly. It's not going to, because it's not going to happen. Why fake it with people? The circuit breaker is not going to happen because it's going to cost state money and the state doesn't have money. So it's not going to happen. So they just play this phony game, change two and a half and give us a circuit breaker. But we'll accept the change in two and a half without it because that's what his members are up there lobbying to Barbara, do. do you support the, the cut? Local aid is a problem. The do you support the what cut? What happened with local aid, and we supported question five, is a lot of the cities and towns this year were giving pay raises, particularly to the teachers union, at a time when the state was cutting back. And state legislators, particularly the House Ways and Means chairman and others, and the governor were upset about the fact that the local aid was being spent on pay raises, particularly for the teachers' unions, when the, when the state employees weren't getting anything. And I don't blame them for being upset. And at that point, we also didn't support an increase in local aid. Yeah, George, this is typical Barbara Anderson. I'm against the state giving more money to cities and towns, and I'm against the cities and towns having a reasonable way to raise money locally, well, was, and I'm it? against no, the reasonable. graduated income tax, which would allow us to raise We're money fairly on the state level. Ask for an override, and if the Barbara is against taxes, everything that's and for fine nothing. With me. Oh, why uh, did uh, a lot of communities had an opportunity, every community had an opportunity on the 24th of September to uh, to vote an override, and very few put it in the ballot. One two. did, isn't two. it? Was it two? Uh, it was two? Super Tuesday, as it was called, George, yeah. was a super fraud. Does it was a one-time override. It was a much more difficult situation. The reality is no, also the property tax, the whole notion of an override, what people are being asked to do is please vote to increase the single unfairest tax in Massachusetts. When they voted in November against question three, they voted to protect far fairer taxes. The same people who are voting against overrides because, as I said a while ago, people understand that all taxes are not created equal. We've got to give them fairer tax options to protect things like public education,
police and fire protection. Well, wait a minute, the graduated income tax won't do that because you've said, Jim, that there won't be any revenue increase at all from the graduated income tax. So how is that going to protect anything? I'd be more than happy, Barbara, if the legislature decided that they wanted to cut back dramatically on the property tax and fill it with income taxes, we'd support it in 10 seconds. And why are your members up here now advocating its increase in property tax without a vote of the voters? That Super Tuesday was perfect. The local aid cut was the problem this year, so we helped and, so, and supported an override just for the local aid, so they could ask their voters to give an override of prop to and have to cover the lost local aid. They didn't even bother asking. Instead, they're sneaking around on Beacon Hill through Jim's members, trying to raise property taxes without a vote, a vote of the people. It's a perfect example, George. Bill Weld, Barbara Anderson, no responsibility for what goes on. Throw it back to cities and towns. Give them the unfairest option and pretend we care about those services. The cities and towns do seem to need more revenue. Uh, one, one way or other, at least, to, to make ends meet and avoid uh, massive layoffs. Would uh, either of you or both of you favor perhaps a, a municipal uh, payroll tax? But our tax burden is already the sixth highest per capita in the country. We don't need more money. We simply need the money spent more wisely, and Bill Weld is definitely moving in that direction. Once we get state spending under control and the economy moving again, then I think we should definitely go back to sharing growth revenues with the cities and towns. But in the interim, what happens to the kids in schools? What happens to the neighbor na to neighborhoods that are terrorized by criminals? No solution. The answer, George, unequivocally is if we could replace part of the property tax with a payroll tax, we would support it overwhelmingly because it's far fairer. Yeah, but it wouldn't happen that way. You get the payroll tax and the property taxes because this organization doesn't support tax cuts. All they want to do is take more of our money. Just That's say what no they to everything, Barbara. For. Just say yes to every tax. What's your solution, place, you know? Barbara, to what's happening in the public schools in places like Holyoke and Brockton and Boston where the cuts public are being school made? Public spending is the seventh highest per student in the country, 26% above the national average right now. The money may not be di distributed fairly under the local aid formula, and that has to be addressed. But the amount of money being spent on K-12 through in this state is the seventh highest in the country right now. Well, we obviously uh, don't have any area of agreement. I hope we would. Uh, Next thank time, George. Right. Thanks so much for being with us, you, both George. of you. Thank you. It was fun.